Hello, can you guys uh, see me now? Let me know in the chat. It says that I'm live. All right, Chris, glad to see you can hear and say, uh, hear and see me. So I have, um, <clears throat> I have uh, a little delay if I leave the YouTube on. So I was just trying to see what it looks like. Uh, what I have on the screen here is just a new uh, uh, VCarve uh, project. And uh, the key of this video is I'm going to show you how I enter the uh, the tapered ball nose into the um, Vectric tool database for V carving when I do it. Now, you had mentioned that you, uh, you entered it as an engraving tool when we were talking, Chris. And yeah, you can do that, but it's going to kind of throw off the design if you're trying to get like sharp points out of your V bit or out of your tapered ball nose. But if you are using a tapered ball nose with a flat tip, uh, it's probably more accurate to do what you did. The problem is you won't be able to see the sharp stars and it won't get as deep as it would otherwise, if that makes sense. So let me go ahead now and um, I'm going to uh, just open up the uh, Vectric tool database, if that makes sense. And uh, so you might see my head shift a little bit because I've got multiple screens here. And that's what I'm doing is I'm looking at my other screen uh, to try not to get it confused. So don't worry about my head turning to the side here. So we'll go over there right now if that'll work. And I'll be trying to watch the comments and I may miss, a, miss one or two that we first start. So let's start with the tool, tool path, the tool database. And the data, the, the bit that I was talking about that I used for mine and ones that are similar is this 46473V bit. It's actually a six millimeter shank. And when I took the course from Broinwood, it's the bit he recommended. Now, if you've seen that bit, let me call that up for us. So here's a, here's a picture of that bit. And you can see that it's got a fairly sharp point. Hey, Brooks, uh, Dan. Uh, you can see it's got a fairly sharp point here. In fact, it's um, 0 0.25 millimeters or something like that. And so uh, 0 0.5 uh, diameter. Uh, so um, when you look at this bit, and you look at the various measurements of it, uh, I wanted to actually enter the bit. Let's see where if I can get over here to the picture that shows it. So the diameter, it says, is 0.5 millimeters. So 0.5 millimeters, if we, if we do that calculation, is it? a tip of 0 0.019 or 0 0.02 inches, which isn't very big. But if you were to put that in the database, then if you were working with very small vectors, the, uh, the V carving tool path might give you a problem because what it's trying to do is it sees that flat spot. It would actually see that flat spot. So what uh, I'm doing to avoid the V-carving toolpath from seeing that flat spot is actually entering this as a V-carve or a V-bit. And so the way I did that is if you go to, um, let, me, let me just add it. Let me uh, go ahead and add a new bit. I'm going to add the same one. So... We've got our 46473. I'm going to go ahead and just put that up here. Copy of 
46473. And I'm not going to set it as my default. I'm going to hit OK. And now I've got that bid in there. So now what I want to do is instead of entering it as a ball nose, I want to enter it as a V-bit. So I pick V-bit right here. And when I pick V-bit, the actual uh, diameter that this is talking about is of the shaft. And we know that that's a six millimeter shaft. And we know, let me pull that over here to the screen again. I'm using a Mac if you guys are wondering. So if I come over here and we look at the angle, whenever you're using a ball nose, they give you the side angle at 6.2 degrees. And uh, so therefore, uh, the full angle for entering it into the um, database is the 12.4 degrees. It's a three flute bit, and now we create settings. And this is where you go create the rest of the settings. And in uh, his uh, video, of course, he added in it as 12,000 RPM. But you can get all the data for the bit from a mana. And if I put all of that in there, I hit apply. Now you can see that I've got all the data. Of course, I didn't change this RPM. But all I wanted to show was how you enter it as a V-bit. Now, here's another one that I entered, which is the Amana 46280, which has got a little bit bigger tip. But I went ahead and entered that in um, into, the, into the database in case I wanted to try it out. The key is that if you enter it as a V-bit, what you're going to see is this, it's going to think that it has no tip. It's just got a sharp point. So therefore, in the V-carving toolpath, it's going to go as if it had a sharp point, which means generally it will go deeper, a little bit deeper, uh, especially if you've got narrow vectors. I'm hoping that makes sense. Now, if you wanted to enter a new tool as an engraving tool, then of course you can enter your ball nose as an engraving tool. And there's a couple key differences when you do that. First of all, it's asking for your measurements in inches. The diameter, the diameter again is the diameter of the shaft. And um, the side angle now is being asked for 22.5 degrees, or in the case of that Amana bit, it would have been 6.2 degrees. And then the flat diameter, and the flat diameter, if we, the flat diameter, if I've got that right, let me call that up. Come on, show me. Uh, Just a second, folks. I'm having technical difficulties. My mouse is not cooperating. For some reason, my mouse st stopped working on me. Let me turn off my Bluetooth mouse and see if it works better. Hang in there, folks. I have no idea what's going on with my mouse.
Well, this is a good first start, huh? Well, can you guys hear me? <laughs> I, I'm going to go try to enter this full screen here again. And I'm actually using the mouse right on my laptop right now, not even the wired mouse. So there is something weird going on with my MacBook, which is supposed to be fully reliable. All right, so we're back. So um, let's see here if I missed some comments that here that um, we can do. So anyway, I was just going to explain that an, an engraving bit, you enter uh, just the inner information slightly different, but it's working with a with a tip. And what I was trying to show was. Uh, What I was trying to show before, and it didn't, it didn't, uh, so I'm getting this weird security warning about my Wacom tablet, which isn't even connected. So this thing is, uh, is acting strange. Anyway, <laughs> so, so the, um, I see that, uh, Chris says he also has a 46280 bit. Can you add the same bit as a ball nose, V bit, and engrave? Uh, that was a question you asked, Kevin. Yes, you can add the same bit. And in fact, in my tool database, if it uh, will cooperate, you'll see that. And I saw Mark's comment about that's why he has a wired mouse. Probably a good idea. So if you look at my tool database, if we go on under, uh, I think it's a carving bit. Let me open this up, make this a little bigger if I can. So in the Amana tool database, let me close this. Close this. Close this. Close this. And if you go to the Amana tool database that you download from Tools Today, you will see the 46473 is entered as a carving bit. So you can see it's entered as a carving bit or a tapered ball nose. Uh, it's also entered in my library as a V bit, and I can enter it as Whatever bit I want to enter in, as long as you make a note so that you know that's what it is. All right, so now let me see if there's any other questions that I'm missing. I'm not as good as Mark is at this, this thing, guys. Um, Glad your shed's coming along, Mark. Kevin, hi. Uh, oh, did mean to lean to shed. Evening, Mark. Howdy, Kevin. Okay, Chris, you saw that I had entered the 46280 bit, I think, up here at the top. So I have my 46280 entered as a V-bit. And you can see the name, the way I named it is I named it as a 46280 V-bit so that I know that's the one I entered as a V-bit.
Okay, I just learned how to fake it. You're talking about the database, right, Mark? I just learned how to fake it. That's exactly what we're talking about is we fake the database. Oh, no, you weren't talking about the database. You're talking, you're talking about how you fake when you're uh, confused or under duress in the middle of a live session. I got you. Well, you're the pro, that's for sure. You and uh, Laney, as I watch him and you, it's amazing. Okay, so, Chris, do you have any questions? Did that answer your question about how you take a tapered ball nose and you enter it as a V-bit and why I entered as a V-bit versus a uh, engraving bit? Chris, can you still hear me? Did, did that answer your question when we were when we were talking earlier? Did anybody else have any uh, other questions that they wanted me to answer at this time? By the way, I hope you saw, well, if you don't have Instagram, you didn't see it. I uh, goofed up my epoxy project yesterday. Pouring it in the garage without my mini split on it was too hot. Hey, uh, can you guys still hear me? I can't tell whether... I'm still on or not. Okay. Kevin, I guess you guys can hear me. You heard about my epoxy project. So uh, basically what happened was... Um, Okay, thanks, Dan. Basically, what happened was I uh, let me call up my uh, pictures. I'll show you guys a picture of what it what occurred. Right now, I'm in the middle of carving a um, cribbage board top that has the Submariner badge on it. Here's a, uh, here's a picture of what the base is going to look like. Let's see if it'll show up. Okay, I'm going to switch to a different screen. All right, so that's uh, that's the thing I'm working on right now. And uh, so I'm actually in the middle of... Uh, Again, my mouse, for some reason, just I'm actually in the middle of
carving this top here, which is going to be the summer some mariner. If you can see that, some mariner badge. And that'll go on top of the uh, cribbage board that I'm carving there. And so here, I'll show you the epoxy. This is the re recarve. So I had to, here we go. Can you see that? So somebody was asking here, um, did it have a bunch of white bubbles? No, Dan, it did not have a bunch of white bubbles. Did it have a bunch of white bubbles? No, Dan, it did not have a white bu bu bunch of white bubbles. What it happened was, as I went in here to start to do the swirls, and I was only 40 minutes into the pour, normally I can keep swirling till about an hour or two. All of a sudden, it was hard and gummy, and part of the epoxy would move around and part of it wouldn't, which told me I was in trouble. So it was um, it was curing uh, not efficiently or evenly. It was curing in spots and not in other spots. And when I went and checked the temperature in my um, in my uh, garage, it was up to 85 degrees, at least in the thermometer that was a short ways away from that uh, pour. Normally, I like to keep it under 75 degrees. I have a mini split to do that. And I had just forgot to check the temperature. And it became obvious when this thing started curing way too fast. So I uh, carved it out. You can see the other pictures there. It got too hot in the garage. So you can see me carving it out here. I'm not going to share the whole thing. But there you can see I'm recarving this thing and uh, carved it all out like I was starting from scratch. And then I report it. You can see where I had it all carved in this picture. All right. And then this mouse is driving me crazy. And then I report it. And it's all hard now. It's looking, it's looking muy bueno right now. I like it. And uh, I'll be carving out for the uh, next step, which is an island. This is a Martha Vineyard uh, order that I got off Etsy. And so it will be, uh, I'll be carving that tomorrow. Let me get out of presenting and take that off. And let's see what question it says. Uh, yeah, Rob, some bits will not allow us to change it. Yeah, Rob, some bits will not allow us to change it from, say, an end mill to a TBN or V bit. Any thoughts? Well, I'm not sure which bits you're talking about, Brooks. Did you have a specific what you mean? Because uh, it could be that, like, for example, um, I, I really don't know. Uh, I think Mark answered down below. I haven't ran into that issue yet. So let me look at Mark's. It says, if that happens, Brooks, don't try to copy it. Enter the specs by hand. Okay. Well, yeah, I haven't tried to copy the data that way. When I'm entering a bit as something different than what it, it really is, I do it by hand. Thanks, Mark. Any other questions? Okay, well, I don't want to take up a bunch of your time. Uh, we went through the key thing uh, that we wanted to do. Uh, I wanted to make sure that Chris got that. I see he said still here up there at 715, but uh, I never heard Chris tell me that he, he understood it. But uh, Chris, if you did understand, please let me know. And, uh, and the answer... 
Have you tried carving wood inlays using CPN versus a v versus a V bit? You mean as a VPN as a uh, ball nose mark or entered as a V bit? Because if we're talking about as a the tapered ball nose entered as a V bit, yes, I have done that. Let me go back and grab the picture of how it turned out. I'm almost there. I clearly have too many pictures. Okay, can you guys see that? There is an example of what Mark was asking about. These, uh, these stars were all uh, inlaid using that same uh, tapered ball nose entered as a V-bit. Yeah, Mark, I, I'm like you, I have way too many pictures. And uh, so that's did a very nice job. Look how sharp those corners are. And uh, there was no hollow sounding. It turned out really nice. Nope, no weird gaps, which is what I was worried about. No weird gaps in the corners or any other problems. Okay, Chris, I'm glad you answered that you think you got it understood. Um, Kevin, you said, what would be the max depth using the uh, tape of ball nose for engraving for epoxy? I used the same depth. Uh, my last couple pours, the, um, let me show you. I use the exact same depths. That probably answers it well enough. Oops. Probably shouldn't be sharing, making you guys suffer through all that. Let's. So if you saw the, uh, if you saw the flag that I did, the Memorial Day flag, There is a picture of the Memorial Day flag right there, Kevin, before I put the white in. And so all of these carvings are at 0.125 inches deep. And the same thing with these stars. Now, the nice thing about the stars, and uh, I wish I could figure out how to... Come on. The nice thing about these stars if you look at it from this angle let's see if I can make that get bigger. 
Look how deep those stars are, and they've got a nice flat bottom, where when you're using a V bit, you'll see this all come to a V. And so this was using a depth of 0.125 inches, if that answers your question, Kevin. Uh, so I would use 0.125. And now, obviously, for the initial pour, if I want the base pour, I'll usually make that a little bigger, 0.13 to 0.15. And I think it probably just depends on my mood at the time. Yeah, Chris, I'm completely with you. The, uh, the, uh, the problem was the uh, tip is what you said. And uh, again, you weren't doing something wrong because you can enter it with the tip, but then it's not going to really act like a V-bit. Or I guess it will, but it won't go as deep because it's going to take part of it away with the uh, tip. Okay, any other questions? Well, thank you for your thank you for your time. Uh, I appreciate it, and. Uh, just to show off, that's the, uh, let me show you what that flag looked like in case you haven't seen it before. We did show it on Mark's channel. That's before it had finish. By the way, this is, this is what the mixing of epoxy does for you is mixing. What I did was I took a, uh, and my YouTube's out on that right now, by the way. I took a uh, some uh, black, which was black diamond, and then I mixed, mixed in some pearl white and uh, some uh, black liquid, and it gave that Cosmo kind of uh, thing. Yeah, Mark, thanks for helping out answering some of those questions. All right, with that, we'll say good night. And if you have any other questions after that, go ahead and send me an email at robsandstromdesigns, gmail, at gmail.com. Thank you for your time, and I'll let you all go. Again, I hope it was worth your time, and uh, I'll get better at this stuff. Take care. Have a good night.